The 2017 tax overhaul didn't just affect federal income tax brackets. Since the SECURE Act was passed, 529 plans have changed as well. Now parents can withdraw up to 10 k per year to pay for private primary and secondary education tuition. That is, if your state allows it. This is a big change to 529 plans and changes a lot about what counts as a qualified 529 plan expense. So should you take advantage of this new provision? In today's video, we're going to explain how it works and when you might want to take advantage. Hey everyone, this is Andy with The College Investor, investing in personal finance for millennials. If you're new to the channel and like what you hear, please hit subscribe so you're ready when our next video comes out. Thanks. Okay, how can I use the 529 plan for private and elementary education? Well, when you use the 529 plan for post-secondary or higher education expenses, the use of the funds are relatively broad. However, Parents need to be careful when using the 529 for elementary or secondary education. As a parent, you may only use the money in these accounts to pay for private school tuition. Yes, just tuition. Expenses such as computers, field trips, summer camps, etc. are not covered by this provision. Additionally, the law only covers distributions of up to $10,000 per year for elementary and secondary education. By contrast, the Coverdale Education Savings Account allows parents to spend money on all qualified education expenses, such as computers, etc. But it does have stringent contribution limits. To take advantage of this new rule, you'll simply cash out your investments, transfer the funds to your checking account, and use the funds to pay for primary or secondary school tuition. Be sure to keep track of how you use the distributions for tax purposes in case you get audited. Let's discuss some rules surrounding the 529 plan. 529 plans are essentially educational IRAs that are administered at the state level. 529 plans are considered tax-advantaged accounts. Savers can invest in the 529 plan and the gains from the investments are free of capital gains so long as you use the funds for qualified expenses. Many states offer tax deductions or credits when parents or grandparents fund 529 accounts. It's important to note that you won't get a federal deduction or a credit for funding a 529 plan. It's also important to note that your eligibility for a deduction may be contingent on choosing the 529 plan administered by the state where you live. If your state doesn't offer a deduction or credit, I recommend checking out our list of the best places to open a 529 plan. We'll put a link to that list in this video description. 529 plans don't have firm limits on funding, but the gift tax limit for 2022 is 16K. That means you and your spouse could contribute 16K to a 529 plan for each child without triggering any extra taxes. You can also super fund a 529 plan by contributing up to 75K, five years of gifts at once. Now let's dive deeper on where to open a 529 plan. Where you open a 529 plan makes a difference. Each state has its own program. And while some states let you use any 529 plan and claim the tax deductions, others require to use their state's plan. On our website, we have an interactive map of the United States. It allows you to pick your individual state and learn more about your state plan or other state plans for that matter. Again, we'll have that link in our description for you to play around with. The big advantages of 529 plans are the tax deductions offered at the state level and the ability to withdraw money without paying tax on the growth. However, to get the most value from the 529 plan, it takes time. Trying to use 529 plan money early in a child's life could limit the benefits of tax-free growth. It's hard to get a lot of compound interest in just a few years. So should you use the 529 for primary or secondary expenses? Well, here are three times where we think it makes sense. Number one, overfunded for higher education. Funding a 529 plan is a bit of risk. You'll never be 100% sure that your child will actually use the funds for college. They may not be cut out for college, or you may raise a star athlete who gets scholarship offers, or if your child reaches high school and doesn't look like they're gonna need every dollar in your 529 plan, it would make sense to use the funds for a private secondary education, if you're already incurring that expense, that is. Just remember, you can also transfer funds to another 529 beneficiary, such as a sibling, without incurring any penalties. Number two, capture tax credits or deductions. 
Parents who already plan to pay for private schools should consider contributing to the 529 plan just to capture the benefits. If your child's private school costs $6,000 per year, run the money through the 529 plan before you pay the tuition. That way you'll capture a deduction or even a credit based on your contributions for an expense you were paying anyway. This only works if you're located in a state that offers a tax deduction for 529 plan contributions. The last reason to consider using a 529 plan to pay for primary or secondary tuition is to take gains off the table. If your 529 account has experienced some nice gains, you might want to use those gains earlier rather than later and save any remaining funds in cash. Distributions from the 529 plan are tax-free when used for qualified expenses, so if you're incurring private schooling expenses, you may as well use the funds from the 529 account if you've seen nice gains. Now, we love to take advantage of the tax code, but your life should dictate how you use the tax code and not the other way around. If private, primary, and secondary education isn't part of your overall financial and family plan, then don't worry about using the proceeds earlier. It is fine to use the 529 as a college savings plan. What about homeschooling? Well, late in 2017, it looked like the right to use 529 proceeds for private, elementary, and secondary education would be extended universally to homeschool families as well. However, that portion of the law was overturned, so homeschoolers cannot universally use the 529 for homeschool expenses. The law so narrowly applies to primary and secondary tuition expenses, it's difficult to see how homeschool families may practically be able to use the funds. That said, a few states universally consider homeschoolers a form of private schooling. That's Alaska, California, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Nebraska, and Texas. These are states where homeschools are universally considered private schools. That means parents in those states can likely use 529 plans for select elementary or secondary school expenses that meet tuition criteria. By contrast, parents in those states can easily use the Coverdale Educational Savings Account for qualified education expenses, which include things like curriculum, textbooks, supplies, and computers. If you are a homeschool parent in any state, including the states that we talked about, we recommend contacting a lawyer or the Homeschool Legal Defense Association before using any distributions for qualified education savings accounts. A quick important tax note for our viewers today. This law is still very new, and it's a big change. As a result, many states have yet to change their own tax laws to match the federal law. What that means today is that using 529 plan money for private school tuition may be a tax-free event at the federal level, but it could be a taxable event in your state until the state law is changed. Be very cautious before making any significant changes or plans around this new law until you understand all the implications. As of 2021, the following states don't follow federal tax law in regards to 529 plan usage for elementary education. That's California, Colorado, Hawaii, Illinois, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, and Vermont. That means if you live in one of those states, you may owe taxes in your state if you take money out of your 529 plan for elementary education. Perhaps that's why it's called government speed. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, be sure to check out our interactive state map to find your 529 plan in your state, and also leave us a comment below. Are you thinking of using your 529 plan to cover private elementary or high school tuition? How are you weighing this decision as a family? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for hanging out today. This is Andy from The College Investor. We'll see you in the next video.